All right, hey, how you guys doing? So this is Neil, and this is November 23rd. And this is a quick update. This is day 44 of the Autoflower, for those that missed it, and the Instagram update. So here's just a quick update for you guys. I'm finally in the new house. This right here will be the fight room slash asthma record video room. I'll have, gotta put soundproofing in here. But uh, right now, uh, the bathroom fan's on, so you can hear that going right now. I, I turned the... The, the light off right now. I just have it in this little closet in here for right now. But I just want her to wrap her arms around this thing for you to see how big this thing is. Look at that thing. This is huge. So yeah, I think it's in a, as long as those buds fill out nicely, it's gonna be a nice, big, big fucking plant. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how big it gets. That's crazy, right? And look, at, I, can, I, could, I could make this bigger. Like I can easily, extend these branches out down like this and then I can make it bigger just train it I can just train all these branches out down down further some people say like why don't you I might actually do that I might just train all these branches down like that but I gotta wait till I get the tent set up so that's why it's in the closet temporarily until I get the tent set up what's crazy I hooked up my co2 meter in the house to see what the co2 is in here this has central central heating so I thought that that brought in fresh air but it seems maybe it doesn't because the ppms are like 1500 now and we've only been in here for not, not that long. Like when we first got here, it was like 1,200. And then we've been here now for, well, I guess it's been several hours now. But several hours several hours later, and now we're at uh, 1,500 um, ppm. So I think that's probably part where, where it probably tops out. So that's why I had the, fat, the bathroom fan on right now to suck a bunch of the air out of the house. Hopefully it'll kind of balance out. And eventually I have to put the portable AC like I had, had at the old house somewhere. Um, but anyway, so hey. You guys interested to check out the quick walkthrough of the house after this real fast? If so, stay tuned. And uh, But yeah, so let's just look at some close-up um, of the buds that are starting to form. Yeah, so once I get the... The tents all set up in the in the garage. I'll go show you what all that looks like. Once I get the tents all set up in the garage, oh, only reason why I had her in the video was one to show you guys how big it was um, in comparison to somebody, so you can see just like in relation how big this plant really is. And then you can see you can see the closet. This is a double door closet. It's like a probably four and a half five foot long closet, something like that. Yeah, it's it's a long closet. Um, it's longer longer than most uh, closets. And it's got the double racks on the top. So anyway, the racks were, t were those were in the way. That's why I have the light hanging. Right now I have the light literally over here like that. And <laughs> it's on full blast. And so I just had it, I have it just blasting the plant sideways right now. And I'm ho only, hopefully it only has to be in here for a day like that before we get the tent set up. And then once the tents are set up, I can go ahead and put this thing in the tent. And then, uh, yeah, and get everything set back up again like it was in the old place and back on the drip feed to them system and right now she's not she hasn't been fed so her ph might be might be slowly rising so what do you think how big it is how much do i think it's beautiful no i mean what do you think about how big it is for a hollow flower oh i think she's huge yeah it's she's crazy great. so scentsy skunk should get a smell on her too yeah so scentsy skunk by or, or skunk by scentsy seeds auto flower is definitely if you want a big plant it looks like it can definitely do that and um, I went you know the main thing is is do the colas get big because just because the plant gets big doesn't mean the colas do right. you know it's all strain dependent so hopefully this is a strain that gets big nice big colas if so then this is a contender with the northern lights by real clean seeds um, that's that's like the most consistent biggest shelter that I've, I've grown I've grown a lot of different a lot of different auto flowers so but yeah, that's when I got 14.8 uh, ounces on. Of course, there was that critical by Royal Queen Seeds, autocritical, but that was a freak of nature. That got like three pounds almost. That was just a really freak of nature. Right, so say hi to everybody. Hello, and, everybody. And Thank then, you for watching. And then bye to everyone. And I'm, right now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, talk about a couple things, and then I'm going to show you guys just a quick, just the house really fast. I'm just, I'm just going to go through really fast and show you the garage and where the grow room setup is going to be and talk a little bit about, you know, when you have a new space, you know, what to think about and how, what the things I thought about on how to set up my, my grow space. And there's certain things I had to think about and how I wanted it to work 
and uh, they're, they're kind of important things to think about, um, especially when you're doing a closed system in a garage. And you got to make sure you have a, uh, some way to remove air from the garage in the summertime with a fan. And you need a nice you know, fan that moves a lot of air. And so we'll go show you that really fast, and I'll talk about that. And so, yeah. So anyway, and also, do you guys want to see more of Samantha in the videos? Thumbs up or thumbs down and say, yay, Samantha, in the comments. If you guys want to see more of Samantha in, in future videos. And uh, she might actually be, uh, well, she's been helping already take over a lot, a lot of, a lot of the different grow things from, I've been training her how to do different things. So, so that way I'm not uh, having to do, you know, so much. And this thing's pretty much on auto, autopilot pretty much. I mean, I did all the training and stuff, um, but she did, you know, she's been refilling the tank for me and stuff. And I tell her the measurements to put in there and all that good stuff. So. But yeah, so it's been doing good. So, and what do you guys think? Should I try to go for, go for super big, you know, try to fill a whole four by four with this thing? Because I think it can. If I go ahead and take all these outer branches and I pull them all down like this, I think, and all those other branches will, will fill up and, and, and it'll, it'll be nice and big. And right now it's, right now it's, yeah, I think it, it's just now finishing its stretch or it might be stretching a little bit more. But either way, right now is a perfect time for me to, Actually, the perfect time would have been right right before stretch, but uh, still, it's still a good time. I can still bend her down, and uh, I just think that it probably wouldn't help yields too much more. It might. I mean, because if I pull this down right here, all those other nodes right there are going to come up, and they should still grow into nice nice buds, and some of these other branches will get a little bit more light, maybe. But I don't know. I'm thinking just like this might be fine, and... Uh, the main the only reason why I would think I would think about pulling the branches down is right now it is a little bit getting a little bit taller than I want it to be. And uh, my tent though, in the new garage, I can have my tent at exactly eight feet. So that's awesome. That gives me a lot more. Remember, my old tent was only six feet, like seven inches or something like that. You can, you can go ahead and come out if you want to. I just wanted to show I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna, These put, are hurting I'm gonna put it back. Style. Put it back in there anyway. This thing needs to be watered so bad, but I, I forgot. It's my um, fault. I forgot it. Yeah, technically, I guess she, she forgot it, but uh, to bring the um, nutrients and stuff with me so that I can water this thing by hand while while it's here. And uh, but unfortunately, so what I'm, I'm gonna, what I'm going to have to do is once I do get all that stuff here is I'm going to have to just flood this thing really good to make sure that there's no uh, salt buildup. And I got to make sure the soil is not drying so far. It looks like it's still moist on top. So. I'm just trying to look in there. Yeah, it looks like it's still moist on top. Let me go ahead and feel. Yeah, so it's still moist on top and it's still decently heavy, so um, it's not drying out too much, but I might have to water it. I don't have any sort of anything right now. Uh, I guess I can, I can go get some vinegar or lemon or something like that and just use a little bit of that because it's late, so everything else is closed. But um, yeah, I guess I could use some vinegar. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving, ate some good food and all that good stuff. and. Stuffing, that's my favorite. Um, yeah, I was happy that I got to have stuffing this year. And because uh, I eat a very strict diet, so it's very rare that I eat stuff like that. So it was, it was cool and fun to eat stuff. All right, so once again, she's going to say, shining off, guys. And uh, oh, peace. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the the quick walkthrough and then, show, and then tell you guys some really important information to think about when setting up your grow space. So set up your grow tent in a garage for a closed system or set up your grow tent in a bedroom. It's still something you gotta think about. Like for example, if I was gonna set up the grow tent in here, um, which I thought about, I'd have to take this down first of all, uh, cause it's taking up too much ceiling space. And there's not enough you know, corner space anywhere unless it's a small little tent. Like over there, I have a full, you know, I put a five, probably put a five by tent in that corner over there. Um, but if I want the eight by eight tent in here, I'd have to take this down. And then what I would do is I'd make sure the back window is facing this window. So that way, um, I can have the AC right here and the air, the hot air will be blowing into the room. And then I'd have this window open and a nice, a nice fast fan, you know, like one of the big, the big 20 inch or 20 inch or 25 inch fans, the ones that are super fast though, like the metal ones. And that would be just boom, blowing all the hot air out of this room. Um, unless of course it's not too hot. If it only stays like eight degrees in the room or so, and it doesn't really make the AC work too hard for the AC, for the tent, that's fine. And then I, then I put the fan on a timer. Um, or just open the window, see how that works. Basically, I don't want the room temperature to get um, over like really 80. Um, inside the tent, obviously, it's going to stay like you know 76 or so, but outside the tent, I don't want it to get over 80. 
And if it, if it starts to get over 80, you gotta put a fan in the window and just blow a lot of air out. Same principle goes for a garage. And uh, different ways to pull that off, usually a fan in the window is your best bet. If you don't have a window in your garage, then you're kind of up shit creek. Because now you gotta like use the door and that kind of sucks because, you know, that means people can like get into your house, right? So, hey, yeah, so we're gonna do a walkthrough right now to the house here. And this is crazy because look at these glasses. Yeah, pot leaves. Got these uh, from a while back ago, actually. Look at the soul patch. Oh, yeah, got a little soul patch going on. That's about all it does. Yeah, I don't really, you know, unless I dye it, that's about, that's about it. I got more blonder facial hair. It comes from my Irish background, I guess. And uh, I can grow a neck beard, though. Look like a big dickhead. Um, but uh, I can't grow hair like right in here. And this is starting to fill in a little bit, but there's a still ball right here. I can't grow, like, cause of, see? I can't grow a full beard because that little ball saw right there. So if I try to grow a full beard, it just doesn't look right. But I don't really care for beards anyway. It just could be kind of cool to just have one one day, you know? Superman shirt. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Superman. Superman. So, yeah. That's basically it, guys. So let's go take the walkthrough now. And, uh, yeah. Just uh, thought some FaceTime might be cool. And let's go take a look around. I'm gonna go put the pant back in here and turn the light back on. And we're gonna do a walkthrough. And I'm gonna talk importantly about the garage and the setup because that, that shit's important. You gotta know how to set it up right. So, all right. So, let's get on with it now. All that gibberish. I'm probably gonna put all that at the end of the video. <laughs> so I'm gonna like, you'll, you'll, I, I, I recorded this in a certain, anyway, you'll know because I'll have transitions and that you'll know, okay, I recorded it out of order, basically. <laughs> I want to just the, the pot information first and then all the rambling at the end. All uh, right, so let's get on with business. What do you do when you get a house? The first thing you do is you analyze your garage, you analyze your grow space. You go, okay, what do I want to use my garage for? One, I want to put my car in here. That, that's an absolute must, it has to be in here. Okay, so then I got to go, how much space do I have left? And so well, I, can, I can pull a little bit further right now. It's kind of pulled over here a little more because we have the uh, this thing in here. This thing won't this thing won't stay in here. Um, if anything, I'll just throw that thing up in the attic. So uh, that's what we had to use that to carry the cats here. But so that will give me a little bit more room where I can pull in. Actually, it doesn't really give me much room, does it? Because I have to kind of pull straight. Otherwise, I have to kind of pull in at an angle. And so I don't know. This gives me some room to put bikes and shit like that. So anyway, maybe I'll just leave that there like that. Um, at least for, at least here and back there because uh, I need to, be able to open the door. So back there, it gives me some room. You know, gives me a little bit of room right here. Anyway, so analyze the growth space you have. So I measured, you know, from like here out, how much growth space I had. I also measured that light. I'm like, do I have to take that light down? That's important. Do I have to take that light down? That's important. That light has to come down, by the way. Because I don't, because I, I measure, first I measure the, how high the ceilings are. Don't just measure one spot. Measure several spots. Several spots. So Take your measurement tape, get, get that little, like a stool, have someone hold it on the ground for you if you need to, and measure up to the ceiling. And then measure another point, measure another point, another point, another point, another point. Me measure like, you know, a few points to get an idea. So like, if you know you want your tent in this area, measure like the center, and then measure the five outer points and see if it's level. And this, this whole concrete, I actually poured water on the concrete, and that's another good test to do. I poured water to see if it moved, and it kind of goes down that way. So there's a slight slope which is good because I like a slight slope. So now I know that I want my water running that way. Um, so when I have the flood tray in here, I want it running that way. Okay, so now I gotta remember like how my tent looked in the old place. Now remember when you walk in my tent, you have the two doors that open up. On the right-hand side, there's the flood tray. And then on the left-hand side, I had the AC and stuff, right? And the AC goes in the back out that way. So that's what I want. I want it set up like that because um, Either that or I want it set up this way, where I'm over here and these are the doors. But then I got to think, okay, well, what if I want the five by five tent right here and I need to connect the two tents together? That way I don't have to use two uh, dehumidifiers and things like that. Or what if I want to hook up that second tent? So if I need to hook up another dehumidifier and stuff, I don't have to have, I don't have to waste the room in my other tent. Um, although I think I can fit two dehumidifiers there pretty easily. Um, but it just allows extra airflow and more space. So the more space there is, it's easier to keep the, de the humidity under, under control. Um, if you have such a crammed space with, with a bunch of plants, it makes it harder. So that's one trick you can do. Um, buy an extra tent and then have them put together. It takes extra fans and stuff like that to do that. But 
Anyway, so I have to decide, like, do I want to do that? Now, if I want to do that, is it practical that my door is here? I'd have to have enough room between both tents to where I can enter this door, enter this door about a foot in between both tents. So I have to measure all that space out, and there's plenty of space. So I measure all that, and that's fine. And, and I also had to measure between these things, that thing and that thing, can a five by five tent fit in here? And it does. And it leaves me enough room on each side for it very easily. Um, originally, I wasn't put the plan out here and uh, hang the light. And actually, I did have it hung, and I was like, wait a minute, I don't want to black out these windows right now. <laughs> so I might forget that. I'll just wait till I get, I'll just put it in the closet, wait till I get my tent set up. So that's something I had to think about. Um, so I could fit the five by five tent in this area, which is good without having to move these, remove these things or anything like that. Um, but if I needed to, I would remove those because I don't need to use this door. Um, I only need to use that one. So that one's on automatic thing. So anyway, after I had that figured out, then I'm like, okay, how am I going to move air out of this garage? Because in the summertime, if the garage gets too warm, how do I move, how do I remove that hot air out of the garage? Because I can't have the garage be 90 or hundred degrees because keep in mind when the AC is connected to the tent, and it's all enclosed. Yeah, the tent staying 76 degrees, but where is all the heat going? All the heat go blows outside the tent into the garage area. Now you could build a, a homemade ducking and have the ducking go up and out from the back from the back of the AC, and because remember it blows air out the back of the AC, right? The hot air. So you can hook up a square ducking that goes into a into a, a circle ducking, and have that circle ducking go out a window, and blow it all out, and then have a spacer that closes the rest of the window off so it doesn't allow more. Air, or you can just leave it open if you want to. It's not a big deal because it's you know trying to blow air around, whatever. Um, and then you only have to you only have to do that during the summer anyway. Um, during the winter time, you actually want that hot air in the garage to keep the garage warm, and it helps keep the tent warm easier uh, when the when the AC does turn off. So either I either have to use that window or I have to use that window. Now another way to do it is if you don't want to make a, a ducking like that, um, you could also. Um, use a fan like the fan I showed you and this window is big enough for that fan So you gotta make sure do I have a, a space that's big enough now if you don't have a space that's big enough I thought I was coming back inside Sorry. It's okay um, go, ahead, you go, go ahead go Okay, anyway, so I wanted to show this over here But if you have a door like this um, this door goes outside which could be kind of dangerous, right? but you can always cut a big enough hole into your door then put it and then put a really strong metal gate over it on the inside so they can't unscrew it. It makes it really hard to break in and then have your fan blowing all the air out that way. Now that is a pretty modified door and um, that's not so good for winter time, but then you can always have some sort of uh, material you put over it in the winter time, weatherproof material, so that way it keeps your, your garage warm in the winter time. Um, that's one option just, just to keep it safe. Um, because you don't want to like just keep your garage door open unless you're willing to close it every time. But you know, if you're trying to blow out hot air, um, you know, even at nighttime, you know, anyway, because AC is still going. So you got to decide, you know, if that's something you want to do and that's safe. And it's 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 definitely not safe to do that. So um, the other option then is you have another door like this that leads inside the house. So what you could do is if the door leads in the house. You can just leave it open and then blow all the warm air into the house. And, but if it's summertime, you don't want warm air in the house. Now, if it's wintertime, that's fine. You want all that warm air into going to your house. It's like free warm air, right? But if it's summertime, that's not something you want to do. Another option is your garage doors. So if you have these kinds of garage doors, it's kind of hard to drill into them. If you have the wooden garage doors, you can cut a hole in that. Again, put a big heavy gate on it on the inside so people can't break in and have your fan blowing out. And then you can, you know, then you can always, in the wintertime, cover that up with something so that it's, it's air, you know, it's, it's weatherproof, you know, some sort of weatherproofing stuff that way the you know, or take the gate off if you have to, then, then put the weatherproofing stuff on. Um, so that's another option. So these are just different options. You can also just, you know, drill a freaking hole in your, in your wall. If you wanted to, if you own the house, <laughs> drill a hole in the wall and then have that be where, uh, you know, have a, a fan in there. Now, the other option is, is using a four inch fan, um, fast air ducting fan that move, moves a lot of air that's made for growing and you open the window up and you put a stopper one easy way to do that like i have a stopper right now it's just a nail you drill a hole right here bam nail goes in there you try to open the window anyway bam it stops on the nail can't get open if you want to you can put one on the top too it makes it super hard like it makes it really hard to break in 
Now, if they really wanted to break in, they can just, you know, smash the window and get in. But that's why you have an alarm system, right? So I'm going to have an alarm system on everything. Every window, every door of the house, camera monitors, I mean, the whole, the whole deal. So if something happens, my phone will get alerted right away. And then if I see that it's an actual break-in and not just a false alarm, then boom, you know, you know, the cops are called. And if I'm not here, um, but most likely I'd be here anyway. I usually always have someone at my house. Um, I like, I don't like having to leave my house unattended. Like if I go for, for on vacation, I like to have someone house sit for me. But nonetheless, um, that's another option. So what that does is if it's a four inch fan, four inches is pretty hard for someone to break into. So you have, you open the window four inches and then put the drill a hole and put the nail in there or whatever, whatever stoppers you want to use to make sure the window won't go any more open than four inches like this right here. And then just have a really powerful fan. They're, they're bigger this way so that they might be huge in circumference, but they come down to two four inch holes and they move a lot of air. Um, you've seen the ones in my other tent before, I think I showed you. And then have ducking. So have that just blowing straight out. So have a little bit of ducking right here and have the fan sitting on the ground or sitting on top of something. And it's just, woo, they're loud as hell though. So that's the downside is, do you want to bring that attention um, with this loud ass fan? They do make ones that are more silent. They're a lot more expensive, but you can always make a silencer for it by putting some um, like foam around the fan part of it. And uh, that can, you know, just look up uh, YouTube ways to, to silence a, a fan, uh, the ducking fan. So you could, you could make out your own homemade silencer. It does, it does take the, the sound down quite a bit. Um, but either way, it's, it's going to still make noise. It's moving a lot of air. But anyway, that's one way. And then, so the two, you know, it's all, the, the actual ducking is only taking up this much space. So for the rest of the space, you need to fill that in with something like a piece of metal or something strong. Because someone skinny enough like my fiance, she might be able to get her head. I don't know. That's the only downside. Like her body will easily fit through four inches, I think, sideways. Um, her boobs might have to smash a little bit, but she can get through. Her head, though, I don't know if it'll fit through. The human head's pretty big, so I don't, know, I don't know if she can switch her head through a four inch space. So that's the main thing. But a kid, maybe a small, small kid might be able to get his head through uh, four inches. And if he can, then you know they can have a kid come in and break in that way. And just make sure you have have an alarm system set up, you know, have some sort of motion sensor or whatever, if you're really worried about it. Um, or put a metal gate um, over that. So that way they can't get through the metal gate. Uh, makes it really hard to break in. But like I said, if they really wanted to, and that's just, that just makes it a little bit harder for them. If they really want to break in and you don't have an alarm system, they just break the window. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, it, it'll make noise, but you know, if they really want to break in your house, they'll, they'll make the noise and be in and out as fast as they can. Um, so just make sure you have an alarm system. Um, but even with the alarm system, yeah, it does cut the time down a little bit. You know, they don't have much time to steal stuff because the alarm goes off. Usually alarms scare people and they go, they don't, they, they run. But if they're like, fuck it, I'm going to go and get whatever I can as fast as I can still, they, they, they know they, they know they got a little bit of time before cops get there. Unless the cop just happens to be right around the corner and that alarm goes off, boom, he gets the call and bam, he's there. Oh, sorry, you're caught, you know. Um, but some guys are willing to take the chances. Fucking damn fucking twack heads, tweaks, you know, whatever. Just, you know, there's just, you know, people that want to take those chances. All right. So ventilation, super important. You got to keep that ventilation is in the sense of I use a closed system. So I'm not talking about ventilating, ventilating my tent. I don't ventilate my tents. I don't bring fresh air into my tents and I don't pull fresh air out. The plants themselves produce the oxygen for the roots and the um, me going in there. And also the CO tank produces the CO2 for the plant to breathe. So it has everything it needs. It's, it's called a closed system. A lot of my buddies use it works fantastic. It makes it to where you can use CO2 a lot more efficiently. And it makes you where you can, I, I have a 50 gallon CO2 tank that lasts me like a month. This last one I just had lasts me, I think over a month <laughs> before, ha before I had to refill it. it. It's actually just now getting low enough to where I have to refill it. There's still a little bit left in there. Um, I thought it was empty, but I actually turned it on. I, I, I turned, oh, I started to unscrew it. And it was like shh, a little bit of air, a little bit of pressure is coming out really low pressure though. And so I just have to turn it up a little bit, but it, I can get a little bit more out of it before refilling it. But anyway, the point is that it lasts over a month because I put on a timer. I've showed you guys that before. Basically, every half an hour, I have it turn on and then turn on, for, turn on for 15 minutes and then turn off for three minutes or turn on for 15, off for 15, on for 15, off for 15. You can buy the analog timers that have 15-minute increments. And uh, that, that is more than enough. And then I just have it just barely turned on, like where the bubble doesn't even look like it's lifted up. And that takes some finessing. And then you have to look at your CO2 meter, which you might Amazon for like about 100 bucks, CO2 monitor rather. And you have to monitor that. And I like to go between the lows, 800, and the highs within the 1200s, maybe 1100s. I don't like to go over that. 
1500 is too much. You don't need that much CO2. Like 1500 constantly is a waste of CO2. I've, I've done a lot of tests and studies to come to that conclusion. Right, so anyway, that's how my closed system works. So then I had to take into consideration where's eight by eight tent going? I went, okay, if I don't want to take that down, do I still have room? So I measure from that over to here, like, and then, and then also still have room from the five inch room and then still have a foot between them. And I measure it all out and I do. Then I measure from the wall out to here. And actually, I don't have to take that down. So I have enough room for the 8x8 tent to fit in here without having to remove that light, which is cool because I can turn the light on when I can see in the garage, which is nice. If not, I would, I don't even know how that's hooked on there. I was like, there's, it's like glued. So I think I have to like take, take a crowbar or something and like get that thing off. Like they did not screw it onto the ceiling. It's like glued to the ceiling. There's no screws anywhere uh, to be, not even underneath the light, nowhere. Um, so I think I have to actually pry that whole thing off. I want to move it and I have to move it over and there's a hole there. And I really didn't want to have to do that. So that's why I was hoping to have the room that I needed. Now I also measured from the edge of the light to the, to this wall over here and then see if I had to take that off right there. Uh, that thing that, that shelf that sticks out, which is kind of a cool work thing. It's like, you can put stuff up there and they built a little light right here, which is kind of cool. So you can have like a little work workshop right here. I like that idea um, of being able to have stuff right here with the light. Where I can do stuff if I ever want to do stuff out in the garage, solve stuff, whatever. Um, and also maybe have more nutrients there, whatever. Um, and I also like having nutrients in something like this. So I'm kind of glad that's there. Um, I just clean it up and use it probably. Uh, it saves me having to go out and buy something. Um, maybe it's just good to keep, you know, store stuff that I like, like nutrients and different things like that that I use for not, not just for growing, but for other things as well. Um, anyway, so uh, that's, that's the different things I thought about is like the different arrangements. You know, an 8x8 eight eight is a square. So, those are the arrangements I thought about, different things I thought about, and actually it would fit. So from there to there to here to here, actually I can fit eight by eight tent um, without even going on the inside of that light. But I can also go up against the wall and still have room to go inside. I think I think from there to there I had enough room, uh, if I remember correctly, from the wall to that, that thing. Um, if not, I had to be on this side of it, one of the two, I can't remember. In which case I have to take that down if so. I can't remember if I had to take that down or not, but I think I, think I can actually be on this side, and I'll have this whole area right here behind yeah, I think that's what I, that's what I think that's what I did. I measured from there down and then over eight, uh, eight feet. And then I measured from there to there and everything will fit fine with plenty of room. So I had two options. One option was have the AC that way. Well, the problem is if I wanted the AC out that way, the AC sticks out of the tent, out of the tent which I have to take that into consideration. I need space behind it, behind it, behind the tent for the AC. This doesn't allow for that. Therefore, I had no choice but to turn the tent this way and the AC has to face out that way, which means that if I want to duck the AC, I need a ducking going all the way to that window right there, or ducking coming all the way over to this window. That's a lot of ducking, and therefore I would need a ducking fan, even, even if it's just a Home Depot one, um, just to make the air you know, move a little bit a little bit better, put an air ducking at the end of it. Um, that way it's blowing out air to the AC. But I don't, I don't do that, that's just not how I do it. How I personally do it is I just have the AC blowing the hot air into the, into the garage, and then I have the window open and I either have a big fast fan with the four inch ducking like I was telling you and then put a gate or something like that before they can't get in or there's gonna be an alarm system on it anyway and then I could um, open it up and put a fan. Um, now what, obviously I wouldn't do it on certain types of windows like I do the one that goes in the backyard but even then it's still not totally safe so most likely what I'll do in the summertime is have use one of my really fast four inch fans or I see the four or six inches, can't remember, and put that up and then put a metal gate. And the metal gate would actually go on the inside here and be really snug and close. And it'll come right down to the thing. So you can still open and close the window, but you can't, you only have this little area, this little six by six inch area, which no person's gonna be able to fit through. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that. And so if they want to break in, they actually have to break the window, which sets the alarm off. And then, you know, I'm usually here at the house, especially lately. Uh, with my health being the way it is um so yeah long gone if, if, if my health doesn't recover then long gone are the days for me jet skiing and shit like that and you know it's all right though i mean i still have fun i still have a lot of hobbies and stuff i'm able to do but anyway uh, it's not good all it's not depressing for me it's just you, you deal with the cards you dealt with and make the best of life uh so yeah those are some of the things to think about when you know when you're building your when building your thing and then you got to consider you can use carpet like this. This is enough to keep the cold from the cement. When I'm sitting on this right now, 
my feet are not cold. When I'm standing on the concrete, my feet are cold. Something to keep in mind. I also, though, will be sending down um, foam. And there's different kinds of foam you can buy. Um, move, mover's foam. You can duct tape mover's foam together. It doesn't have to be super thick. Mover's foam is not that thick, but it's enough to keep it insulated from, to keep the bottom of your tent insulated from the cement. If not, the bottom of your, your, bottom of your roots will get too cold and your, your pots will get too cold and cold, too cold of roots can actually stunt the growth of your plant, make it not grow as well. So it's good to have some sort of insulation down. Some of the cheapest insulation are, are rugs. Buy a couple of rugs and lay them down um, from Walmart or something like that. Uh, another one would be they have these like rubber mats you can buy. Those are kind of expensive. You can do movers foam. You can go to a foam outlet that actually sell like carpet foam, the kind of foam that goes underneath carpet, and just lay that out. That works great. I like something that's waterproof. Um, so I don't like using rugs just in case like I get a spill somewhere and it, and it leaks underneath my tent That way it's not gonna make my carpet get moldy and so I like using is the pink panther uh, Thick foam that's about this thick and uh, you can get a little bit thinner ones But it's a uh, wall insulated foam and, it, and it's like basically a wall and you can cut it and stuff And then you can uh, comb for kick and break it. It's not super strong durable stuff Sometimes stepping on it can actually crack and break it if it's not evenly flat on the ground um, and that's what I have at the old house right now, some of that. And then also you can get like a boxing foam that from FedEx and it's about this thick and it's what I use for my lights and stuff like that to uh, spacers in between different stuff. And it's the kind of foam that's more spongy. It's not the hard crack foam. It's the spongy foam so you can step on it without it cracking. And then you can just get um, order, order the big sheets of that and then uh, just figure out, figure out how big, how big the roll is and then Know how much length you need to say you say your tent's eight feet long so get nine feet of foam or whatever that way you can stick out of the tent just a little bit and uh, if they don't if it's only let's say four feet wide then you need two strips of nine by four feet and then duct tape them together down the center that way they don't come apart and separate now it's waterproof underneath your tent and it's insulated and then that's it that's those different things that's just it that's pretty much that's what the main things you got to think about is now i know i have to enter from this side I get in through here, this is where I'm going to zip up, open, get inside my tent, boom, my plants will be on this side over here, AC will be on that side, dehumidifier, everything, CO2 tank, this, this will be the setup um, right here. The AC will be blown on that side over there, I'll have about two feet to a foot behind the AC, so I have plenty of room for the air to go. Unfortunately, that means I can't use this area really. Now I might move, if I have the room, I might move it back a bit further to here, you know, in front of this light, so I still have like four feet here and then the AC is only stick a little bit so I can still be on this side and have a table here or something and work um, and use make use of this and I guess I had a cable line out here I wonder if this actually was active or not not that I would have a TV out here anyway that's kind of weird I wonder if they someone must have back they, I don't know no because it's just a the people I bought it from unless they had like one of their they have it's a three-bedroom house there's only two people living here um, I think they might have had a kid at one point I don't know just because the lavender bedroom but anyway, so I like the black door. That's a pretty cool touch. <laughs> it's a steel door, by the way. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So both doors are still framed steel doors. So we're really hard to break into, um, into the house, like super hard to break through those doors. Much easier just to break a window and get in that way. But that sets the alarm off too. So bam. And then I own, you know, a shotgun. I have a gun on, my, on me at all times. My concealed weapons license. I have a little, um, I think it's a 338, uh, the caliber, and I just keep it in my pocket. It's just a little small light gun, but you know, it's it, it'll kill you dead. Um, although that's not what I want to do to somebody uh, if they brought rogue in, you know, and it's actually against the law anyway. But I would definitely be like, you know, <laughs> boom, hold out. Hey, you need to you need to calm down. Get get down on the ground, dude. Cops are coming. You know, don't make me shoot you. And if they keep coming at you as a threat, you have the right to shoot them. And it's weird, my, uh, my class, when I went through the class when I can sell weapons, they said, if you shoot, kill them. Why? No witnesses. They can't, dead man can't talk. I'm like, that's kind of weird, but it kind of makes sense. Cause like, if you shoot him in the leg or something, cause you're trying to be kind, you just shoot my leg. Like, Hey, I said, just stay down, man. He can actually sue you. You can actually still get in trouble. That's it's stupid, right? Even though you, 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 you know, cause it's your word against his, whether or not he was actually coming at you. Uh, making a threat, you know, it's just stupid like someone can actually be threatening your life and you can still get in trouble or or get you know sued um, I like this both windows have really deep Really deep um, area here. So that way it's easier for me to 
extend out from this and, and have a stand for my fan to sit on and open a window and boom, blow the air out. And um, that's another option too, is just turn the fan on, open the window, blow all the hot air out now as it starts cooling off in the evening time and then, and then close it. But if your AC is pump, pumping a lot of heat in the, in the garage, if it gets over 80 degrees, you might have to you know, turn that fan on at nighttime too. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then I know I'm gonna leave a foot of space and then I'll have my five by five tent back here if I ever decide to use it. Um, you know, eventually I'm going to. Um, I'm just debating whether or not I wanna do one more grow with a lot of plants. Especially now that his grow site's farther away from me because I moved. It's a lot longer of a drive. I just don't know if my anxiety can handle handle doing that this time. It's a lot of a lot of traveling, but I might still do it. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of drippers. You know, I'll be I'll be doing 25 plants this time if I do it. Um, but yeah, so uh, what do you guys think? I think I've already proven what the light what the lights can do. Like, and besides, it all comes down to the par. If someone par equals equals yield. How to, how to prove that? Look at any HPS. A thousand watt HPS has an average par in a four by four of taking 17 points of measurement divided by 17. That's how you get the average par. And, and you want to take 17. So the center, and then you want to take, you know, plus sign two this way, you know, so at the center, at the one foot mark, at the one foot mark, or two foot mark. And then at the center, at the one foot mark, two foot mark. So you're basically going one, two, three, four, five points up in a plus sign like this, this way as well. And then also from the center, one foot, one foot, like make an X. You want to measure right from the center. Those are 17 points of measurement, and then you divide by 17, that gives you average par. When I do that with a thousand watt HPS at two feet away, covering four by four area, you get 575, sometimes, sometimes like 580. It all, it all just, it all just depends on the uh, type of ballast and and the and how new the bulb is and what and what brand the bulb is. It doesn't really change much. Um, from a, a cheap Apollo to the most expensive Porter Lux, you only get like a 5% difference. So it's not, it's, not, it's not much of a difference there. So um, with that, that's, that we know we can get um, at least two pounds off one of those lights. If you're a good grower, you can get that. And I know a lot of growers that do it, and it's not that hard. Well, I mean, it's hard, but for master growers, it's not hard. Or even for just good growers, it's not, it's not difficult at all to do that. I need to send him back on this rug and the feet are getting cold. So anyway... So anyway, it's not it's not hard to do. Um, fiance is telling me I think to hurry up or something. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so that's how that's how to go about. I can't hold that side. That's lame. I, it's hard. I've been holding with this arm for so long now. You know what? I can go like this. I think there you go. Anyway, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, Got a cool background here. I should put my wide angle lens on so I can be like this, and then I can be able to see my car at the same time. But anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, just make sure that to keep all those things in mind, what you're doing, I forgot what I was talking about. Fancy came in and said something. I can't remember what she said now. Um, oh yeah, that's right. She was, she, I think she said she was going to bed. Um, and I'm actually gonna need to go to bed too, uh, hopefully if I can. But yeah, so anyway, that, that's, that's the idea. And then, uh, oh, that's what I was saying. Okay, so what do you guys think? Should I try to hit that three pound mark right now? considering that it's just a lot of extra work for me right now. Um, I think I might be able to do it with nine plants, maybe, um, in three gallon pots, but I don't know, maybe. But um, I know I can do it, I'm pretty positive I can do it with 25 plants because this strain is, doesn't need a whole lot of light and uh, the auto, auto, I was either gonna do auto Colorado cookies or the Northern Lights Times cheese. So I already got the Northern Lights Times cheese, I have enough seeds to do that with. And uh, that's a pretty good yielder. And I know in those little pots that it'll, they'll still get a good size. I should build an average of two ounces. That's all I need to do. If I can get an average of two ounces at 25 plants, I beat my three pound mark. That's pretty impressive. Um, that's, a, that's the average weight. Um, so I'm still debating whether I want to do that or not. It's, it's, it is a lot of work. Um, I do have the drip systems for it right now. And I have the extra, the extra drum and pump and all. Actually, I need to go buy one more pump, but um, so that went on the hand water. Last time hand watering was just so much work. So me and her like switched off because it was just a pain in the ass. Even with the actual pump, you know, to hand water, like, no, it's got to be on a drip system. That's just the way it has to be. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I just do that? Or should I just use that five by five tent to do big plants in, whether photo periods or whether they're autos, I'll, I can switch back and forth. And then my eight by eight tent, that will be for my perpetual grow for auto flowers to try a bunch of strains. So you guys can know which ones are the bomb, which ones, which ones can produce awesomely. 
um, you know, like good quality marijuana, but also maybe good decent, good decent yields. I won't be, maybe one half I'll, I'll sometimes do a big auto or maybe I'll do a big auto in a five by five tent. And then anyway, so that's kind of the idea, but hey, this is your guys' channel too. We're a community guys. So I need you guys' feedback. So please, if you watch this long, damn, you're crazy um, in a good way. And I appreciate so much. Um, share the hell of this video. I appreciate that too. And hey, uh, support the fight channel. Help stop bullies. Yeah, power to the people. Ba 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 ba. You know, mess them up. Just boom. You know, got to do that. Get rid of those bullies. Bow. You know, hook to the face. You know. Anyway, um, <laughs> you gotta stop the bullies. It's not cool, man. Um, so anyway, check that channel. Support that channel out. Um, hey, if you guys, you know, you want to learn how to fight. That, I'm telling you, I've been, I've been fighting for a long time. I started back when I was a little kid, eight years old, started getting kickboxing. And then uh, when I was 17 or so, got into Muay Thai pretty, pretty deeply, kicked a lot of ass, kicked a lot of, I kicked a black belt's ass. I was a Kung Fu master. And that's why I lost all respect for Kung Fu after that. Because I wasn't a black belt in anything. And I was just, I just had a lot of, a lot of street fights behind my, behind my belt. And I had a lot of Muay Thai fights behind my belt. And, uh, you know, you don't get you don't get belts in Muay Thai. At least not in the, not in the Muay Thai I was in. There, my sensei guy gave me no. There was no belts. It was just you go and you fight, and that's I'll, I'll tell you how good you are. <laughs> you know, you how good you fight. That's how you know how good you are. You don't need a belt. Um, then I started getting jujitsu and stuff like that, and, and uh, that's that's awesome and fantastic. And over over time, I developed my own style, which I call jujitsu, and it works great in the street, and it's been street tested and all that kind of stuff. You know, obviously. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so. Um, but I do believe in weird stuff like reincarnation and stuff like that. But it's a natural, it's in a natural way. It's not in a supernatural way. But it is still reincarnation. You have a real consciousness that exists outside of the body and it connects with the body. Anyway, I go all throughout it. If you want to know what it is, just click out, you know, on the Namicism. Just go to namicism.com. That's N A M I C I S M.com. Namicism.com. And it's also in the, just go to my Namicism YouTube page, and it's right there at the bottom of every link, or every, every video. But anyway, so um, I talk all about my philosophy, my beliefs, and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in, in something that's different, um, it's definitely very different. And my theory of everything is, is something that's really interesting, I find interesting. And I also have a little page, if you just want to read the page, it's on, under the writings of knowledge, and it's called uh, self simulating Universe. But my theory of everything video goes in, in a great detail about it. Um, uh, anyway, so... Getting off topic. Yeah, so double peace. That's what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching, guys. This whole video is out of order, so I don't know if that's gonna be at the end or not, but support my other channels, support this channel, help people learn how to grow some marijuana, help people learn how to how to defend themselves, how to, bah, 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 how to fight, bah, bah, you know? Da, 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 bah, you know? I get a Muay Thai glitch, I need to the face, you know? <laughs> Teach them how to own, meditate, and namicism, and the guided meditations, you know, and uh, how to awaken yourself, and how to overcome different aspects and things that bother you, like fears and, you know, uh, addictions, all that kind of stuff. Away. Just awaken your awareness. It's awesome. Anyway, so get in tune with yourself. Meditation does so much for you. It's awesome. I love meditation. So anyway, that's what namicism is mostly about. It's mostly about meditating and it doesn't matter what your beliefs are. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Namicism doesn't care. Namicism, read the tenets of Namicism on the Namicism page. There's only 10 of them, they're very short. And it basically says, think for yourself, don't follow anybody, figure out reality for yourself. That's the main idea of Namicism and, and meditate, you know? So be kind and that's uh, simple. Anyway, thanks for watching guys again. All right, so just a quick walk through to the house on the way to the garage. Um, three bedrooms, we got, that's the master bedroom. We got a cool little closet here. We got the, the bathroom, got a cool little Batman. Uh, yeah, got the fan going on in here. I'm, I'm gonna redo this whole shower thing. I'm gonna have a cool, my cool shower head, like the the kind that like rain on you, the big, you know, big ones that kind of rain on you. you know, different, have different settings, but yeah, I thought that was cool. I found that Walmart, Batman toothbrush holder. And that matches, so that's kind of cool. Put a little mirror thing and makeup. Um, anyway, so then we got this room here, which is going to be my office. And we got this room here, which is going to be her smoke room. And that's going to be the uh, fighting slash. If I, if I continue to do fighting videos, that is if my health allows me to. My health has been going downhill 
unfortunately. Um, but if it allows me to keep doing that, then uh, that'll be the, sla the, the, the fighting slash asthma recording video room. Um, and then come out here. We got a water ball on the ground for some reason. The dogs must have did that. And uh, we got the out oh, there, there. Look at Cowie and the puppy. Oh, they're playing. She's so cute. She looks like a little fox, huh? That's a uh, Cowie and Pixel. Pixel, hey. Yeah. She didn't name her Pixie, but I was like, anyway, look at this. This is badass. So that's going to be where the entertainment center is going to go. Right now, I just had the TV propped up against that, the stone. But it's like a, it used to be where um, fireplace was. Well, not, well, kind of, like, kind of like a fireplace. But anyway, this will be where the glass entertainment center is going to go right here. Um, and then the TV attaches to that. It's a really cool entertainment center. That's a little hammock for the cat. Um, big, big bay windows here, which is awesome. So that way I can have big jungle plants right here. And that'll hopefully help raise the oxygen level in the house. And I can also have hanging plants, one there and one there. So I'll have a big plant in the bottom, and then I'll have a hanging plant on the top. And then we have the sliding glass door that goes on the backyard. And just to show you, look at this is crazy. Look at that, 1515. And like I said, when I first got here, it was about 1230. Now that was with no one in the house. No one living here. Like there's no one, there's been no one in this house for a long time. I, I, I bought it almost a month ago now and I'm just now moving in <laughs> and uh, I'm waiting for the movers to bring the rest of the stuff so I just brought the necessary stuff I needed my PlayStation 4 my laptop my printer my my screen and then we just bought a blow-up bed for right now until the bed gets here and this is the kind of fan I'm talking about oh look at CD oh really quick hold on before I go and talk about I love these lights take they take a second to warm up but they look really cool but oh, there's Sadie. Oh, the puppies. Hey, Sadie. How you doing? This is Australian Shepherd. She's so smart. She's a good puppy. Anyway, this is kind of found somewhere right here. Get a fan like this right here. That blows some serious air. So you want one that blows a lot of air. And you want, you know, anyway. So I'm going to turn those off for right now. Check out the kitchen. Not really big fan of the color of the countertops. And they're they're not marble. So eventually I'll probably get it remodeled in the future if, uh, if I mean, that's if my health takes takes a turn for the better. Today's been actually a decent day for me. I've been able to get up and walk around a lot and stuff, and I just hope I can figure out what the hell's wrong with me. Um, but if not, you know, whatever, you just take life what it is and make the best of it. But if my health, obviously I'm not going to want to change this unless my health, you know, like who cares, like, unless I'm actually able to be active a lot and stuff like I just don't care what my kitchen looks like but I mean they're growing on me I don't, I don't mind them but I think in the future I like to get black countertops but love these kinds of stoves this I think the ceramic kind of whatever um, cool thing it's got a cool little thing here on top to light and the fan dishwasher sink garbage stuff right now all this big old island you know my alcohol my alcohol thing there uh, for when I do drink it once in a while but this is all not going to be here this is just like this is where we decided to put everything for right now that is temporary, like some fast food and stuff, because really, I, I rarely ever eat this kind of stuff. Um, and I only did because we didn't have anything else here right now. Uh, white carpets, which is kind of a bummer, but I love this lamp right here. It's got a dimmer switch on it. Boom. And then you can turn it all the way down as low as you want. It's pretty dope. But yeah, I can actually rock call that. That's actually cemented in there. And uh, they actually had that built, which is really cool. And oh, dude, it's crazy. So just got in the house, a big old clock came with the house. I've always wanted one of these. I just never got one for some reason. But um, what's crazy, so let's go to the garage. Uh, second bathroom, just a half bathroom. This is where the, they didn't even finish painting this. Like what lazy bastards, right? <laughs> but anyway, this will be the washer and dryer goes. And unfortunately, my washer and dryer won't, won't, won't fit in here. So I have to buy a new, a new set. And it's just barely like wide enough for like, it's gonna be hard to find this set that fits in here. Like I wouldn't really care about somebody else's house really just excited you know it's the first house i ever bought and i've bought a couple cars over the over the time for those of you that have seen my cars i've had uh since the time i've been recording i think you guys you guys have seen my uh, mini cooper which i didn't buy brand brand new i've learned my lesson with the frs don't buy brand new cars buy them slightly used like this one 370z bought it slightly used normally these are